Hey, Jazzy. Hi, Uncle Ebony. I was just wondering, will I grow up to be a big, strong, Texas Jumbo Forever guitar pick just like you? It doesn't matter how big you are, son. It matters what you're made of. If you don't agree that Forever Pick is the most awesome tone-producing, mind-twisting tool you've ever strummed across your strings, Luthier Robert S. Paul stands behind it. You get a full refund. <coughs> Click below and save now. Hey, y'all. It's Shit Post Friday. Th that's all there is, dude. It's a cult, man. Hola, peepolis. Brad the Guitologist here. It is time for... Shitpost Friday. First up in Shitpost Friday, uh, because we had such a, a sad Shitpost Friday, a really depressing one last week with a lot of uh, a lot of tragedies, a lot of people coming out of surgeries and going into hospitals. <laughs> so I thought this week we would lighten up a little bit. I wanted to show you uh, this cool chick. She is uh, almost 80 years old, and she's uh, rocking out still like a rock star. This is, at, uh, it, this is in Atlanta. And she's at some kind of uh, some kind of uh, rock school for girls, but yeah, check her out, man. Yeah, just very cool. Uh, really neat to see stuff like that. I always love it when the old folks whip out their skills, and especially when she went behind her head. I can't even do that. I don't even know. Shit. First of all, don't hit your lights. I don't think the Telecaster is really meant for behind the head work. I wonder if the Strat would be better. Hang on. Fucking. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Hang on. All right. Yeah. Fuck that. All right, next up in the news, I wanted to discuss this article. Uh, this is on thefederalist.com, and the premise of the article, the main question is, what will it take for guitar to make a comeback? Uh, this is by, written by a guy named Nathaniel Blake, and it's uh, definitely worth the read. One of the points he makes that I actually agree quite a bit with is this one, where he says, uh, but great playing alone will not be enough to regain the public's attention. Guitar heroes re will return when the voice of the instrument and the brilliance of the musician are matched to songs that resonate with a broad audience. Guitarists have always had a duty to serve the song rather than the reverse. Aspiring guitar heroes will need to think more like good singer-songwriters. Willingness to subsume guitar virtuosity in service to the song will ironically be essential to guitarists regaining the cultural spotlight. And honestly, I couldn't agree with that more. You know, I kind of grew up in the age of virtuosos and showing off, and we had Eddie Van Halen, and, you know, we had Steve Vai on, uh, in the movie Crossroads, you know, as the devil. And, and you know, I grew up kind of in that era and, and wanting to be like those guys. You know, I kind of grew up uh, wanting to play like uh, Kirk Hammett played on on all those early Metallica albums, you know, I wanted to I wanted to shred out and and honestly, that that's the kind of the irony of that is that you know even though uh, Kirk Hammett is not today considered one of the greatest guitar players, uh, but if you listen to all those early solos in all of those early albums like Up Through Injustice for All, for instance. Uh, you know, there is a lot of stuff in there that's that's fairly difficult to pull off, and not just anybody can do it. Uh, but the thing is, all those solos that he did early in his career seem to serve the song so well. And the songwriting was there. The songs were intricate. Uh, there were uh, lots and lots of changes in them, uh, lots of things going on. There were several solos in the same song, but you didn't feel like uh, you were, you didn't feel like uh, the, the solo was an interjection into the song. You felt like the solo was building upon something, that it was taking it somewhere else. And a lot of their songs, like Master of Puppets, for instance, uh, the guitar solos themselves were used almost like a symphony, you know, they were building uh, harmonies out. You know, in a lot of those tracks, it was just, it was a matter of uh, where is where is this solo gonna take the song, you know? And a lot of times the solos would 
would be the harbinger of like, okay, here's a change in the song even. You know, there are so many different ways that a solo can serve the song and guitar players can sort of show off without um, stepping all over the song. And I think I think for too long uh, um, it was it has been a case of guitarists showing off for the sake of just showing off. And I'm probably guilty too. I mean, you guys can watch this channel and I, I'll just kind of noodle and noodle and noodle until the cows come home. And, you know, there's really no songs or anything coming out of what I'm doing. It's just kind of just noodling to show off the, usually show off the tone of an amplifier or the, show off the tone of a guitar or something like that. So that's a bit different. Different. But when you're talking about songwriting, like this guy's talking about, I absolutely agree that you know if guitars are gonna uh, be carried into the future and be really respected as as an instrument, you know they're gonna have to learn how to serve the song a little bit better and uh, not have all this all this sweeping and shit and all the craziness going on over the top of a song. It's just we gotta instead of the song being a backing track. You know, it needs, <laughs> we need a situation that more closely resembles, you know, something that George Harrison might have done, you know, where his solos were in service to the song. Speaking of being in service to songs and service to music in general, I, I saw this article and it really, uh, really kind of caught my imagination. This guy, Ahmed Ag Katie, I, ho I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not. He was exiled from Mali for playing music. And it just, it made me wonder, are there really places in the world where people can't play music or they would uh, play music under the threat of, you know, being punished by the state? Is that really a thing? The latest album by guitarist Ahmed Ag Katie evolves, evokes a windswept desert night in North Africa that was recorded, however, in single haunting takes on an eight track cassette in a Portland basement. He intended for his album to recall the Kadal region in Mali, a homeland he's been banished from for playing music. I've heard of things like, you know, uh, street performers being being banned and things like that, you know, in certain localities and maybe even countries, but I've never heard of someone being under the threat of banishment or having their fingers cut off for simply playing a guitar. And if we look at here at the uh, CIA's fact book, which, uh, you know, you know how I feel about the CIA, but their fact book, their online fact book is usually pretty, pretty good information. The post-coup chaos led to rebels expelling the Malian uh, military from the country's three northern regions and allowed Islamic militants to set up strongholds. I guess they have a lot of um, Islamists in the country that, that might, might kill him. Okay, yeah, under terrorist groups, uh, it does say that they have some terrorist groups there. Al-Qaeda, offshoots of ISIS... So yeah, there, there's definitely some problems going on in the country of Mali right now, and I can see why maybe this guy would have problems if he's uh, if he's there playing any kind of Western music on a guitar, electric guitar no less. The origins of modern Tuareg guitar music can be traced back to the 80s when Colonel Muammar Gaddafi offered citizenship to Tuaregs in exchange for military military service in Libya. They recorded songs of yearning for home songs of political strife and songs calling for rebellion. Soon enough, their music was declared illegal. The tapes became criminal contraband and the musicians, now considered rebels, were threatened with severe violence if they were caught performing. I would say that's fucking punk rock, wouldn't you? That's pretty, uh, that's pretty hardcore. My hat's off to you. I'm actually, I'm gonna eat some pork rinds in, in uh, celebration. Barbecue. All right, on to more news. As you guys know, on this channel, I always try to highlight like technological advances. I always try to highlight things like that are happening in the medical world where guitars are related. You know, in the past, I've talked about guys who are getting brain surgery and playing guitar at the same time. I've talked about people with ghost limbs, you know, who had hookups to play guitar or play certain other instruments. But uh, I thought this was rather cool. Okay, the uh, University of uh, Cornell has created a nanoscale guitar string. Apparently they first created the nano guitar more than 20 years ago, but now they have basically come up with a way to uh, change its vibration and to listen to it on the fly. They didn't have a way to do that before. They could kind of record long periods of time and they could listen back to it, but they had no way of like changing things on the fly and seeing how it was gonna react in real time. Really cool, let me read you a piece of this. In a new study, Phil McEwen, the John A. Newman Professor of Physical Science and his colleagues developed a set of micro-tweezers capable of lifting the string called a nanotube 
and holding it near a device that can measure it. We created a better technique for measuring and it revealed a new world of complex and interesting behavior. It was one thing to do an average measurement and listen over long periods of time, but it was another thing to listen to it instantaneously and hear every small change in its vibration. It goes on to say the nanotube is so small, the width of a strand of DNA, that it doesn't absorb enough light to be measured with most methods. And so they had to develop this optical resonator that would allow them to see what was going on and to, and to get their, I guess, their little nano tweezers around this thing so they could move it around. Very, very crazy, interesting stuff. But it also goes on to say that the vibration of the nanotube is far too high pitched to be audible, but the researchers could hear its sound by slowing it down 500 to 1,000 times. So that kind of begs the question, at what point is uh, some scientist going to take this nano guitar on tour where he, you know, he's up on stage with his little micro tweezers? The Jimi Hendrix of nanotube up there. <laughs> Maybe he's playing behind his head. You know, speaking of microscopic things, check this guy out. You know, this is one of uh, yet another uh, of these people who just can't, can't be satisfied with the normal... 12 notes that uh, equal temperament has given us so he's taken instead to playing microtonal music and if you don't know what microtonal music is it's basically uh <clears throat> it has a different scale other than than the you know the 12 note scale that we're used the chromatic scale that we're used to he in this case is adding more notes he some of them 19 note systems so there's like six extra notes squeezed in there and then he's also got uh, 34 and 36 tone systems as well. Just crazy. I mean, there, I'm of two minds on this. I, I just, a part of me thinks that this is utterly pretentious horse shit. There's enough crazy, beautiful things to explore uh, with the tonalities that we already have in Western music. Uh, you know, probably to last a lifetime. You know, anybody who's spent any time d delving into music theory uh, or watching Rick Beato <laughs> videos and stuff like that, you know that there's just... You know, music is, is a very wide uh, area of study, and if you even spent every waking moment on it from, from now to the time you die, you're probably never going to discover everything that there is to discover anyway in the 12-note system. So, it, there's, uh, you know, a part of me thinks, you know, well, why bother with all this microtonal horse shit? But then, you know, another side of me thinks he's reaching for something, he's exploring, he's seeing what else is out there besides what, uh, you know, society kind of handed him at birth and said, okay, here, you know, here's the way things are. And I can kind of respect that. I can totally respect that in a way. You know, it kind of harkens back to the, the way I used to be in school whenever I would go into geometry class, for instance, and ask the teacher, well, what's a point? You know, how can a point exist? How can two dimensions exist? Uh, so I can kind of understand it in a way, but at the same time, you know, it's just, it just really seems uh, like... He himself even alludes to this kind of pretentiousness when he says uh, he's discussed He's discussed his approach, his melodic approach to his playing with other members of the microtonal community, some of whom were very intelligent but inclined toward theoretical investigations rather than artful compositions. <laughs> so you can see where it's kind of going with that. But yeah, uh, you know, speaking of Steve Vai, <laughs> Steve Vai is one of the people that I read about in guitar magazines. I think he was one of the first people who kind of exposed me to the idea of microtonal systems. Uh, in some kind of some interview way back, uh, he's launched an online library cataloging his massive guitar collection, hundreds of instruments from Ibanez gems to multi-neck models to custom and fan-built curiosities are available for viewing. So, you can check out his website if you're interested in that. So yeah, that's gonna do it for the news. All right, that'll do it for this Ship Post Friday. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have, please hit subscribe down below. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe over on my second channel as well, Guitologist Channel 2. Uh, the reason to do that is because here pretty soon I'm gonna start doing live streams and I'm gonna start doing those over on Channel 2 exclusively. So if you wanna, if you wanna participate in live streams and live hangouts where we might be doing some Ask an Amtech segments live, uh, please do subscribe over there on Channel 2 so that you can get notifications for that. And for now, see y'all later. Y'all take care.